Hello everyone. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Paul Joseph Watson video entitled The Truth About Gender. Well, that's the title now. Uh, when he posted it, it was called Why Women Suck at Sports, in all caps, uh, before swiftly being changed for some reason. And you should probably go and watch that video just so you can be sure I'm not misrepresenting his arguments. It's only eight minutes long, but that means if you speed it up, it's only four minutes long, and he sounds rather funny sped up, so that should hopefully take some of the edge off having to watch a Paul Joseph Watson video. Go on then, off you go. And welcome back, sorry about that. So then, what's the point of Paul's video? Well, it seems rather stupid at first, doesn't it? You know, all the football mistakes with the silly sound effects and music. Uh, but it's actually a clever little bit of manipulation. This video exists to misrepresent feminist arguments about sports and reframe the discussion in such a way that makes feminists seem crazy, whereas Paul Joseph Watson, and by extension his viewers, get to feel like enlightened truth speakers, quote, triggering the social justice warriors just by speaking basic obvious facts. And this is a fantasy, obviously, but before we get into the specifics of how, uh, let's go through some of those basic obvious facts and have a bit of a chat about them. So then, men obviously outperform women at the top levels of most sports, and this is for a whole host of biological reasons. If we take a man and a woman of similar height and weight, the man will typically have a larger heart, higher lung capacity, denser bones, more muscle mass, and various other things that will usually give the man an advantage in most sports. Now I say typically and usually because of course there are outliers, men and women who fall outside the average, so you can get men who are worse than most women at sports and vice versa. And of course, with training, it's not too hard for the average woman to outperform the average untrained man. The majority of the time though, women have to train longer and harder than men to attain the same level of ability, and at the top athletic level, say, the Olympics or top flight football, everyone's training pretty much all the time anyway, so this effectively squeezes women out of the running. However, even though women can't usually compete directly with the best men in each sport, uh, these differences in ability might not actually be as different as you might expect. Women's records tend to lag behind men's by about 10%, uh, but that's not 10% in everything, mind. There's a scale, some records are closer than that, and Others, mainly ones that are more dependent upon muscle mass like weightlifting, are much more exaggerated. So then, given all of this, what are the feminist arguments for integrating sports? Well, one argument I do see is in favour of integrating sports in which biological differences don't play as much of a part, say, shooting at the Olympics, for instance. The last time women were allowed to compete with men in shooting at the 1992 Olympics, a woman won a gold medal and since then the sport has been segregated by gender. Now, some might say this is good, it allows more women to get represented at the top level, or something like that, and others might see it differently, and say it'd be better for women to be able to compete with men directly in these kinds of events. And I don't know, to be honest, I kind of see both sides, but that's one argument anyway, that maybe some sports are unnecessarily segregated. Another argument I see is in favour of more mixed sports, like we have mixed tennis and badminton, and that might be good, you know, you could have mixed relays and swimming and running, and all sorts of team sports could have mixed divisions. So there are real conversations going on there. Uh, however, and this is to Paul, uh, I have never seen any feminist make the case that we should just integrate something like boxing or MMA, say, and just leave it at that, because that would be incredibly stupid and dangerous. I've never seen any feminist deny that men generally outperform women at the top level of most sports. You see, Paul's problem here is that the actual arguments going on aren't as stupid as he'd like them to be, so he has to pretend. You see, the argument he wants to have is one in which crazed feminists insist that women are always equal to men in everything, and, and then Paul smirks and unsheaves all of his facts, and then the social justice warriors crawl away from him, screeching, you're a sexist. And it's a great plan, honestly, but the spanner in the works here is that these people he's talking about don't seem to actually exist, by and large. Paul gives a couple of examples in the video of people who are supposedly making the argument that he is countering. One is this post from feministing.com by a user named Vicky Chatwin. Uh, Paul read out part of it in a silly voice, of course. Now, what Paul missed was the concluding sentence. 
Uh, maybe in things like boxing or lifting weights, men would have an advantage, but what about other sports which are not just about brute strength? Now this conclusion makes it clear that Vicky Chatwin does understand that men have an advantage in certain sports and is actually talking about integrating those other sports, ones in which the differences don't play as much of a part. The other example Paul gives is from the start of the video. So a while back I was having this debate with a feminist. She claimed that women could compete with men at soccer but weren't allowed to because of gender segregation in sports enforced by the patriarchy. This shit writes itself. Now, I couldn't find this supposed argument Paul had. I searched through his Twitter and didn't find anything, and he's not usually above naming and shaming people, to be honest, but he doesn't hear for some reason, so my guess would be that this conversation didn't actually take place, and he's just pretending it did because the only way he can win an argument is by making up what the other side said. But since I might be wrong about that, Let's pretend this argument did take place anyway. So the imaginary slippery slope straw man feminist said, women can compete with men at soccer, but just aren't allowed to play against them because of the patriarchy or something. They do love blaming the patriarchy, don't they, those imaginary feminists? Now all I can imagine here is that Paul has either met a real life caricature of a cartoon rabid feminist, or he's misunderstood a different argument. You see, there has been the odd case of clubs in men's lower division leagues trying to sign professional women footballers and being denied that by FIFA, who insist on the leagues being strictly divided. Now, I can see someone making the case that men's clubs should be allowed to sign women if they want to. If you integrated the leagues in that way, you know, keeping the women's leagues but also allowing women to play in the men's if they're able to, you'd end up with something like the current chess situation, and probably with similar arguments for and against that. Anyway, misunderstanding or not, uh, Paul has framed the argument such that the feminists he's arguing against are all delusional, and all he has to do to beat them is cite basic biological facts and tell the truth. It's quite a low bar he set for himself there, and surprisingly, he will fail to clear it, because as we'll see, even with dishonest framing, Paul just can't help lying. For example, Paul includes this clip in his video. That's because no matter what gender pronoun you call yourself, biology is king. So that's the supposed world's strongest woman arm wrestling against a supposedly average man and losing. The implication there being that even the strongest woman in the world is weaker than the average man. Uh, so I went looking for the context here, and first off I'd like to submit the following clip for your consideration. It's the moment of truth! It's man versus woman! Get in the house! Where you gonna hold her hand? Hey Rob, stop your... So that was American strong woman Jill Mills beating comedian and not professional athlete Sam Tripoli in an arm wrestle on a show called The Wild World of Spike. Sam Tripoli was one of the three hosts on that show alongside Kit Cope and Jason Ellis. Jason Ellis being the man from the clip that Paul showed in his video where he labelled him the average man. And here is average man Jason Ellis winning a professional MMA fight. You see, Jason Ellis isn't actually the average man, he's a trained athlete. Do you think that this fairly represents the average man, Paul? Because if that's the case, I think you need to look in a mirror. You look fairly average, Paul. No offence, uh, but according to you, this means you're stronger than Jill Mills. So, here's Jill Mills deadlifting 475 pounds. Repeatedly, I might add. And I've got a challenge for you, Paul. If you post a video of you deadlifting that weight even once, I'll donate 500 pounds to a charity of your choice. And I'll even give you until Christmas to do it, just in case you're a little out of shape right now, you know. It shouldn't be too difficult for you, I mean, you're already stronger than Jill Mills, clearly just by virtue of being an average man. You see, this lie reveals another purpose of Paul's video, and that's to reassure his male audience that women aren't as good as them, and never can be. And he does this again elsewhere by telling Porkies about an Australian football match. Look what happened when the professional 
international Australian women's soccer team played a team of 15-year-old boys. The 15-year-old boys team won 7-0. They called this a shock result. It wasn't a shock result. Even at 15, the boys were physically superior to a highly trained team of adult female professionals. So there was a lot of deception and lying by omission in that clip, which I noticed because I'm lucky enough to just remember this incident from when it actually happened. So, losing 7-0, it's not a very good result, is it, really? Uh, but Paul declares this not shocking at all because of the obvious biological advantage that the boys have over the women. Now, this might lead you to believe that this match was a one-off, like an exhibition battle of the sexes sort of thing. And that's just not true. This match was a warm-up for an international friendly game that the Australian women's team was playing in the run-up to the Rio Olympics. You see, they play these sorts of games all the time. There aren't enough women's teams around at that level to get in enough training games, so they play against the youth teams of men's football clubs. That's another point, actually. This was the youth team of a professional football club. It wasn't just a random group of teenage boys. And it actually was a shock result, because the last time the women played against teenage boys in a similar match, they drew 2-2. And as coach Alan Stajkik, Stajkik explains, we've probably played 40 matches against boys over the last 18 months, and the objectives are always the same, to test out our players, to find out their strengths and weaknesses, and see where our team structure is good and where it's not. In fact, for all of those actually involved, they seem surprised that the match even had a reported result. You know, it was a training match, warming up for a friendly. Half the first team weren't even present. And it was a rotating player match, meaning they kept swapping players out and testing new positions. The captain was playing in a jumper. Also, the women's team was themselves fielding players like Ellie Carpenter, who was 16 at the time, the exact same age as the boys she was playing against. Regardless, 7-0 is still a bad result, but it was a warm-up match where they were trying out new players and tactics. It's not as though they were playing as if they were in the World Cup final. No, the only reason this news story took off is because it allowed sexist men to have a bit of a chortle about women being crap at something, you know, completely ignoring the dozens of other times that the women's team has played similar matches and not lost 7-0. Oh, I am good at ruining all the fun, aren't I? Now, the oddest portion of Paul's video is this little bit on Bill Nye's recent, apparently controversial show about sex and gender. And this was odd to me for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I went and watched that show, and it seemed a fairly basic rundown of the modern scientific understanding of sex and gender, interspersed with, frankly, rather rubbish attempts at comedy. And so it was surprising to me that anyone even took issue with any of this, other than the comedy, that is. The other reason this was odd to me is that the show has absolutely nothing to do with the different sporting abilities of men and women. Paul seems to have just shoved it in there because it's a recent meme thing about gender to talk about. So let's talk about it briefly anyway. Now the fairly recent scientific understanding of sex and gender being different things, and even when only talking about biological sex, there are different chromosome combinations that neatly fit into just two categories, seems to have left the anti-feminist anti-social justice crowd a little bit confused. You know, sex and gender are the same thing, they say, there's only two. How could our precious science, which we claim to love, be leaving us behind? And that's because science changes, it updates. With additional evidence, it may come to new conclusions over time. And just as creationists mock science for its evolving and changing understanding of things, the rationals and anti-feminists are now mocking Bill Nye, just for reporting the current scientific consensus. And my favourite take on all this was Ian Miles Chung, aka the wrongest man on Twitter, retweeting the criticisms of an actual creationist saying that there are only two genders. Gender politics makes strange bedfellows. So anyway, as a close out today, I'm going to put in a bunch of clips of men fucking up at football just to balance Paul's clips of women fucking up at football, as if a bunch of cherry-picked clips prove anything, you know. So watching his video, I kind of got the sense that Paul doesn't really understand why people like sports, because it's not always about watching the very best of the best, or everyone in England would only watch Chelsea, say, because they won the league. 
Or everyone would only watch the heavyweight boxing and MMA fights. I mean, they're technically the strongest, but they're not always the most interesting to watch, are they? Similarly, women's sports can be fun to watch, even completely divorced from the fact that they can't compete with the best men. You know, Ronda Rousey's career has been incredible to watch, and the story of her dominance and downfall is as interesting as anything happening in men's MMA. You know, far from only wanting to see the best of the best perform, people tend to like an underdog story, you know. The best football match I've ever seen, not in terms of sheer ability, remember, but in terms of entertainment and excitement, was the 2011 Women's World Cup Final, which was Japan versus the United States. Now, Japan had already shocked everyone by getting to the final. They had to first beat hosts and current world champions, Germany, and then they had to come back from being behind against Sweden, and then they had to face the Americans in the final, and were expected to lose handily, having never once beaten them in 25 previous appearances. The Americans were much taller and stronger and faster than the Japanese, and they were dominant throughout most of the match, with the Japanese barely holding them back. And they equalised in the final minutes of extra time with one of the most inexplicable goals I've ever seen. You know, what happened there even? I don't know. It just sort of somehow went into the goal. So the match went to penalties. Penalties in the World Cup final? Always very exciting, isn't it? And I didn't give Japan much of a chance here, because their goalkeeper appears to be the smallest person in the entire world, uh, but she saved two, and Japan won. It was the perfect underdog beating the odds and winning story, and if you're prevented from being entertained by something like this because you're sitting there thinking, well, they couldn't beat the German men's team or something like that, then that's just sad, frankly. It doesn't all have to be about gender, you know. So anyway, Paul... Nobody thinks that males and females are exactly equal in ability in everything except the feminists that live in your head. You're in an argumentative cul-de-sac talking to yourself. Your fans are a collective, fragile male ego who want to believe that the average man is an MMA fighter. You know, you're not triggering anyone or speaking truth to power. You're being a shoulder to cry on for lonely men who are scared of ladies. Anyway, go and do that deadlift video. I want it by Christmas. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. Uh, we hit our next Patreon goal. Well, hey, uh, thanks to the support of all these lovely people you can see on the screen right now. I couldn't do it without you, and you're all wonderful, so give yourself a firm handshake and pat on the back. If you like my videos and want to see more of them, consider joining this list of names by pledging me a dollar. Now, I say a dollar, you can pledge me way more than that if you like. I mean, I'm not going to stop you, but I'm genuinely happy for any support, really. Also, like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter and all that jazz, if you feel like. Right, see you next time, folks.